Hey everybody, it's Ben here, and I have uh, battery modules out of my 2013 Tesla Model S, which I had an error which shut down the car. So somewhere on one of these modules uh, is something that caused the problem, but I have to physically look at all these and see if I can hunt down where it is. Okay, we are looking at the end of this battery module. Um, I've lifted up a couple of these pieces of Kapton tape and the reason why is there's a clear plastic cover on the top and the bottom. And the two parts actually overlap. So you can see here's this top piece. And then this bottom piece comes up to about the middle. But if I move it, you can see this, um, the bottom part actually comes all the way up to the top of this circuit board. So in fact, what happens is about this area here, has two layers of that plastic on it instead of just one. So let's come in real close and take a take a better look at this here. Roughly what we're seeing here, kind of this area, has two layers of plastic over it. The other thing we want to remember is where this is. Uh, so this up here, this is the top side of the the battery module, and this end is towards the middle of the pack, towards that spine, and it's really tight in there. And it looks like what happens is that this plastic cover, since it's two layers here, this gets pushed a little bit um, when the, the battery is, when the module is inside the battery pack. And these two capacitors right here, they're like the tallest thing that's up on top. So what happens is when this gets put in, this gets pushed, the two layers of plastic, it's a little extra thick. And these two little capacitors right here, C27 and C26, they get rubbed against. Now, all of this has conformal on it. You know, it's that clear uh, protective coating for uh, electronics, but it can actually wear away right here. And unfortunately, if you've got uh, water, you know, moisture, uh, of any type in the battery pack that can then get absorbed in right there because of it. I'm just going to lift up the clear cover to get this out of the way. Now here's something kind of interesting. Down this side we can see some connections here and those go to the BMS wires that connect to uh, the, the various sections of the battery module here. Four wires on top, uh, three wires on the bottom and we can follow these traces over and we see there's these repeated rows of components um, so each of these has some electronics here that uh, measures the voltage of that section of the battery pack but down here these parts are pretty well protected but up here where we get that rubbing that is cell six that goes to these. So it looks like when there's a problem with these sorts of things, it's almost always that cell block six. So I got myself a tool here. This is the Tesla battery module monitor. Um, I'm gonna hook it up to uh, USB power just to power it on. And then it has a connector on it, uh, which matches uh, these BMS connections in the battery module. So I'll plug that in. So a little LED we see come on down here on the board. And some information pops up on here. So for the info on here, it shows that we're connected to one uh, battery management board. It shows our pack voltage, 24.09 volts. Uh, it shows the high and the low uh, the, the highest uh, cell block and the lowest cell block in the difference between the two. Um, we're four or five millivolts different uh, from the highest to the lowest. And then it also shows two temperatures because there's two temperature monitors uh, in this battery module. So that's fine. I mean, that uh, th those voltages are within a range that uh, shows that, yep, this should be okay and just work in the way we want it to be. This shows all uh, six of those segments at once along with the voltage. Uh, the red there shows the 
um, the highest voltage. And uh, uh, it doesn't really come through, uh, but right now the um, one that is sort of a cyan color to show the lowest. So pretty, pretty straightforward. You plug it in, it tells you whether it's good or not, shows you the voltages, lets you know that they're within the range, and hey, seems like everything's good. So that's a nice little test of uh, a good uh, cell module, good battery module. So what I can do now is I can use this to go through all 16 of the modules in the battery pack. And because of where this connector is, I wouldn't even need to physically remove these modules uh, from the battery pack to be able to do this test. Now, I am doing it because I do need to physically inspect all these modules. You can't see this board when it's in the battery pack. You need to pull it out to manually inspect it, see if there's anything going on with those uh, capacitors right there. But as it is, I'm going to go through all of these modules, take a look at the connections on those BMS wires, I'm going to inspect that board. And the other thing I'm going to do is on the lower piece of plastic here, um, it's perforated. And what I'm going to do is bend and snap that part off so that it doesn't um, cause trouble in the future. So it's not two layers here. Um, it'll just be the one layer of plastic. So I'm going to snap this off on all of these as well. Now, another thing I thought was kind of interesting is I have a bottle of Conformol here, and it says on there that it contains UV tracers. So I thought, aha, I actually already have a, a blacklight LED bulb, and sure enough, it, it glows uh, under that blacklight. And so if I look at the board here with the blacklight, I can see where there is and isn't conformal on that board. And I thought maybe I could see if there was anywhere up on those capacitors or not. So here's how that looks with uh, just my one regular light bulb shining on it. Now if I bring in the black light, let the uh, iris adjust here, uh, we can see those light, kind of just all these lighter areas are covered with conformal. And we see that like right around those holes and over over here, there they aren't. Um, I guess that's a pretty common thing in circuit boards because, you know, a lot of times that's where you've got a, a mounting screw or it might be a ground or something where you need it not coated. Um, but when I look at the C27, C28, um, it looks like a nice even coating of conformal on there. Uh, invisible spectrum light kind of rotate the board and, you know, look for the, the glare, the light bouncing off of it. But just looking at this with the black light, I mean, it's kind of quick and easy to see what's coded and what isn't. So I think I'll take a look at all of the boards with the black light and, you know, see if there's just anything obviously there or not there um, as a, a quick first through. And then I also have like a jeweler's loop to look at these all up real close to. So going through these various modules, I did spot something right away. Um, I did also notice here, just the way this is framed up, it's kind of easy to see, you know, these parallel rows of electronics repeating for, you know, the, the six sections of the battery pack. Uh, so this is vertical right now, so that's the top end. Uh, I still have the plastic in place. Um, C27, C26. I don't think it comes through nearly as well on the camera as what I can see with my eyes here. But on C27, there's a black part on the left here. Um, so there is no conformal um, picking up the black light. So I can see right now that the conformal is worn away on that top edge of the C27 here. So that is uh, definitely going to need um, some attention. Now, whether I can just add a little conformal on there or if I need to replace that capacitor, I'm not sure. I'll probably get some input on some of the, uh, the forums about that. And I've been marking all the modules as I pull them out. So this is module number 10. This is uh, right up near the front um, on the right side. So hey, look at that blacklight LED bulb here being useful. 
and again kind of hard to get in real close and be in focus but when I look um, just directly at that capacitor I do see a little bit of gunk a little bit of blackness so that's definitely that definitely has been rubbing um, I don't think putting some conform oil on top of that helps I think that one's going to need to be replaced cell module number 10 Houston, we found a problem. This is module number seven. And if we look over here, that's our C27 capacitor. It's got green gunk on it. And the plastic cover, look at all that green goo that's on there. And again, this is the piece of plastic cover that probably originally was snapped off in the factory by Tesla employees and later they decided not to do it to save, you know, 10 seconds times 16 modules times however many cars were made. Um, this is really obviously a problem right here. Um, did not need a black light or anything for that, just a simple visual inspection. Uh, definitely could see there's a problem there. Now, one of the issues I had with this car is when I used the Scan My Tesla app, it showed all the voltages as being good. Um, so I knew it was some sort of an intermittent error and unfortunately it was a latching error and so I had no idea when this error was happening or not. So let's plug in our little tool here to the board on battery number seven. See the little LED turn on. This is starting to look for the module. Let's give it a second to pick up that serial. Okay. So it says it's connected to, to one and it gives me the green thumbs up and voltages look good. They're within, what, three, three millivolts of each other. So three, uh, yeah, three or four. So um, according to this, it is a perfectly good you know, hunk of battery, but I know I have a problem with it. I mean, it's really obvious with the uh, with that corrosion that's right there. But I also know it was an intermittent problem because this was originally reporting that everything was fine through the Scan My Tesla app. And so I thought, you know what? I want to try something. So right now, this is out of the car. The plastic shields are spread apart. Um, but when it was in the car... Uh, everything was all kind of pushed up against each other and, um, you know, it, it's bolted down, but there's a certain amount of vibration. So what if I literally just touch that capacitor? Look at that. Block number six really jumped. number six way way out of line with the rest of them 360 millivolts different <laughs> yeah that'll that'll throw an error for sure uh definitely bad so i think right here the plastic rubbed on there uh this is cell module seven i saw signs of moisture entry in there so the conform all gets rubbed off there's moisture get absorbed creates all this nasty corrosion part doesn't work anymore and then it doesn't read correctly so there the good news is there isn't a problem with the battery the problem is with a sensor so that's got to be fixed and while I have the cover off I want to inspect the connections from these BMS wires to their particular section of the pack on this side, there's four of them here, 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 and here. And I'll just take a quick look and make sure that those solder connections haven't gone bad and like popped off. So for example, right here, we have the black wire. I look at it, it looks fine. I'm actually just gonna touch it. And that feels nice and solid. Over here, blue wire. And so I gotta inspect the four on this side and the three on the other side. 
So it's pretty obvious that I've got problems in at least two of these modules. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't mean that I found the problem because uh, just because there's a problem with one doesn't mean that there's not a problem with one of these other modules. So I'm going to have to go through all 16 of them, uh, check those BMS sensor wires, make sure none of them is broken off. I need to inspect these boards, make sure there's no uh, corrosion on that C26, C27. Um, in the shell of the pack, I need to uh, get those umbrella valves out, inspect them, replace them as needed. Uh, and the, I did see that the two, um, the two bays uh, that I could clearly see that moisture had gotten in, uh, were, those were, that was seven and 10, those are the ones right behind the front wheels in the car. It was modules seven and 10 that I could clearly see there was uh, corrosion issues on those capacitors. So apparently this is a common failure method uh, for these older Tesla battery packs. It's just unfortunately gotta get the whole battery pack apart to get in there to fix it. So next I'm gonna have to mail order some capacitors, learn a little surface mount uh, soldering uh, hopefully somebody can give me a hand with that. Um, and after that, I'm hoping I can clean up the pack, put it all back together and have a working car. And until next time, stay charged up.